everybody, this is the Mixing Set. <laughs> My name is Will Toussaint. I'm Lena Green. That's right, that's right. This show is set here at the Dan Bar that is the Drunken American Millennial Network. All right, so let's jump right into the show. We have a lot to cover and absolutely no time to do it. All right, so uh, we're going to jump right into the first story. Uh, midterm elections. Yeah. Woo! 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 I voted. I'm still wearing my sticker. I washed my clothes. No, she didn't. She didn't. Um, so yeah, voting, midterm elections, it was a really wild one. Everybody expected some kind of crazy blue wave. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's jump into the facts of what actually went down. Last night's historic wins were absolutely insane. Over 100 women were elected to Congress for the first time. Woo! That's awesome. So yeah, the Democrats took the House, and um, so Maxine Waters is the Chair of House of Financial Services. Oh, yeah. And she's definitely gonna be getting up into Trump's you know what. That's right, exactly. all up in that thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, <laughs> I felt wrong saying that. Yeah, it was wrong. Elijah Cummings, he's the House of Oversight and Government Reform Committee. He's gonna be investigating everything that happened in the executive branch and all the stuff the Republicans did. Oh, it's beautiful. His wife is so beautiful. I thought yeah. that was awesome. I didn't expect that when I saw a picture of him. It's like... Well, um, he's gonna be... <laughs> He's going to be looking into a lot of the tax stuff going on with Trump and also some stuff going on with his hotels that he was trying to cover up. So, yeah. That's going to be. And there's this guy. Adam Schiff. Skiff. Skiff. You guys know how to pronounce Schiff. that? Skiff? Skiff. He's actually a, a representative of California, Democrat. It might be Schiff. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Chairman of the House of Intelligence Committee. He's going to be relaunching the Russian probe investigation. And, really looking into that, because they didn't really do anything the first time they investigated it. Right, right, right. Quotations, quotation marks. Yes, yeah, right. Investigation. Very true. Because that's what that was. Okay. An investigation. Wow. <laughs> so let's get into this drink. All right, let's jump into the drink, because that was a lot. Damn. 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 So I'm basically going to make an AMF. We all know what an AMF is. It's an adios, motherfucker. Uh, to go into this drink, to start off our AMF for mainstream media. They covered this like a madhouse. I think they're having a party because mainstream, all of them, like conservative and liberal, are talking about just how crazy it's gonna be having a house that really wants to take down the president and putting up all the examples of when that happened before. So we'll do tequila, we'll do gin, we'll do some rum, vodka. For obviously, I'm sure the Russians had some hand in it. <laughs> now we're gonna throw in a little bit of blue curacao, and obviously, the obviously mm -hmm. the blue curacao is for the blue wave that everybody expected. It didn't exactly happen like we thought it would, but turning over the house is super important. The main reason being that people like uh, Maxine Waters, um, Elijah Cummings, and uh, Schiff. <laughs> Schiff. Schiff. And Schiff are going to really take on the um, executive branch. They're going to be leading the House, so that's pretty crazy. Nancy Pelosi obviously is going to try to do something. The sweet and sour is going to be for social media. Uh, this is going to be for the people that were obviously sweet and sour about this election. Some people were really upset about what happened with Stacey Abrams, but some people were really happy about all the historic moments. So we're going to do some of this guy right here. All right, and I'm throwing some ice in this thing for how cool it was. Yeah, that everybody came out and voted. And I think social media really did a push to have people go out and vote, especially with all the celebrities and influencers. I'm going to do this a lot. Who push people to vote, go out and vote. I think they did a great job. A lot of people showed up to vote. So to those people, I'm going to shake it, shake it, shake it ass. Oh, shit, did I get myself work? Oh, God. Oh, that's cute. Hey, it was a blue wave, whatever, we'll do it. Uh, I'm gonna top it off with a little bit of soda water um, because, and I wanna make this point very clear. This is something I knew regardless of, just the same way I knew that Philly was gonna riot when the Eagles went to the Super Bowl, regardless of whether they won. I knew that regardless of whether we win and we have a blue wave, there's still a lot more work to do. So bubble up, bubble up. Don't, don't shore down and be like, all right, work is done, because millennials tend to do that. We show up like for Obama, then we'd be like, all right, my job's done. I'm gonna focus on living on my mom's couch now. And we're gonna take this guy right here. Was that a little bit too butcher. real for somebody in the audience? Sad butcher. Some people were like, no, please don't mention my life. All right, here we go. And we're gonna do this guy right here. Prop 10 didn't pass, so that rent is high. Hmm. And rent is oh yeah, high. Prop 10 did not pass, and that is rough. And rent is high. So the women is obviously because um, when life gives you lemons, go vote. 
Um, and then a cherry because it's such a great American story. And there you go. The AMF. Oh, the main thing about the AMF also is obviously I expect this blue wave to be the adios motherfucker to Trump because it's at least adios to his wall. So maybe he's next. Damn. Damn. We're going to move on to the next part of the show, which I believe we need to cover some stuff. So I don't know. Uh, where's Johnny and Celine? <laughs> Where is Johnny? Johnny Bangs! Where you at? Hey, how you doing? Oh my god! What's up, man? Thanks, how you feeling? Thanks for coming. Thanks for another. Listen, this is not gang signs. That's my, that's my family right there. Oh, wow, that's so impressive. Get out of town. Anyways. Oh, hey, can I get you something? No, oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. I'm fine for now. Okay. I'm just, I'm being better now. Being better? Yeah. How do you feel about the world and everything going on right now? Look, <laughs> I'm trying to cope without alcohol. Can you please just support me? Okay, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> but, well, cope, get it off your chest. Go yeah, and say whatever you, know, you got to say. Things have happened. Some good, some bad. Um, so the first story: Australian man dies from eating a slug for fun. What? <laughs> this is a pretty tragic story. Um, and I think that what makes this so tragic is that I don't know how to feel about it. I'm very conflicted. You see, because on one hand, someone has died. Like it's you know, someone has lost a family member, a friend, and all of that. But on the other hand, um, the death was so avoidable that it was missed. I don't know, and I, and I don't know if this also makes me even more evil than I think I am, but like the first thing that popped into my head when I heard the story was like, this is a white guy, right? <laughs> well, here are the facts. Um, in 2010, 19-year-old Caucasian rugby player, Sam Ballard, was drinking wine with his friends when <coughs> Sorry, my, my throat just got a little dry when I said wine. Uh, well, I think I'm changing my mind on the wine. And so he's drinking wine with his friends, everything's going fine, and then like a little slug kind of slithers. And he looks at it and he's like, should I eat it? Which, which means it was a self dare, which is even sadder, <laughs> you know, but okay. Um, while this was a questionable decision, eating the slug should not have had the consequences of death. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. So Damn. Oh, damn, sorry. Damn. Um, <laughs> so eating the slug should not have had the consequences it did. It just so happened that the slug he ate was infected with rat lungworm. I don't know what rat lungworm is, and I never intend on finding out what it is, but uh, it affected his brain, and he fell into a coma, and then he was paraplegic, and then eight years later he died from complications. Yeah, Australia is wild, guys. Like, honestly, I just like, I mean, just the other day a man was attacked by a shark, and he had to go get 20 stitches and stuff. And like, I wanted to feel bad for the guy, but then I found out that he was swimming naked. And like, I don't know, I just, I kind of feel like he was asking for it, you know, just a little bit. Like, oh. I'm not, I'm just saying that like, maybe if he'd covered up a little bit, you know, like this whole thing could have been avoided. Cause you know, sharks will be sharks, guys. Like, they, just, <laughs> they can't help it. Um, I do want to go to Australia. It's, it's, Australia is so pretty and the accents are very, entertaining, but I'm not sure that I'm ready to have a near-death experience quite yet. I've managed to live my whole life in two African countries and not get attacked by anything. I don't know, but I, and I know that there are dangerous animals in South Africa, but I feel like in Australia they come for you. Like, you're just like walking down an urban street and a black mamba will like jump you, you know, in the street. I, in South Africa, if you just mind your own business, you'll be fine. Like, you pretty much, to get attacked, you have to be one of those old white dudes that are really bored, so they just like shoot elephants because they can't legally do that to black people anymore. Ooh. But um, <laughs> I do offer my condolences to the Ballard family, and um, yeah, uh, that's that's pretty sad. So to them, damn. 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 Um, on to the next story. Uh, Nigerian army uses Trump ideals to justify their actions. Mm -hmm. So last week in Abuja, uh, an IMN protest, an IMN stands for Islamic Movement of Nigeria. Um, it ended with the army opening gunfire and killing over 40 Shiites. Um, when faced with the obvious backlash, the army responded by putting out a tweet linking people to a popular reality TV star's uh, anti-immigration speech. So, and telling people to like watch and make your own deductions. And in this speech, the reality TV star states that um, rocks thrown by immigrants at the wall count as firearms and therefore the army should shoot them. It's obviously the same thing. So besides the fact that using Trump as a moral yardstick was just a bad idea, this was between Islamic protesters and some other black people who happened to be soldiers. Like, Trump doesn't care about none of y'all. 
but he really doesn't care. It's like, I'm just, I'm here to be that girlfriend to tell you, you know what, girl, get over that fuck boy. He ain't think about you. Oh. Make better decisions, Nigerian army, please. So damn. damn. But onto some Africans making some good decisions. The Liberian president abolished tuition fees for undergrad students. Woo! So here are the facts. So George Weah, uh, he met with some state university administrations about the tuition fee after some students came to, the, came to his office and were complaining about the increase in tuition fees. So according to IOL, he discovered that of the 20,000 students who register, only 12,000 actually attend because they the only ones who can afford it. And of those 12,000, 5,000 are dependent on some sort of financial aid or scholarship. And so when he made this decision, he realized it would actually fit into his presidential campaign, fight, fight poverty and improve the economy of the country. Now this is obviously music to my ears, but like I can't help but just be like, after going through Fees Must Fall, I'm a little shook. So Fees Must Fall was a student-run organization, uh, movement, sorry, uh, across universities in South Africa that was obviously aiming to reduce the cost of tuition. Yeah, there were protests, university was shut down, entrances were barricaded, students were even arrested for two consecutive years. And we ain't got no free tuition. <laughs> like, if I'd known that just across the country, just across the continent, you could just walk into an office and be like, I'm upset. <laughs> and things will work out. Like, I'm just like, you know, I, like Drake, am a little upset, I'm not gonna lie, because I paid a lot of money for a very expensive engineering degree that I'm obviously not using right now, but that's not the size, that's not the point. J honestly, jokes aside, I'm really, really happy that he's doing this. I think this is incredible, and he's setting a great example for just all of us. So, Woo! we can celebrate him. Damn! That's great. Damn! Woo! Give me some sports, dude, if you got sports. Well, I mean, Floyd Mayweather still can't read. Oh shit, that's some sports. <laughs> Well, all right, we're gonna start with uh, good old Floyd Mayweather. You know, he actually said that he was gonna fight this New Year's Eve, and he's fighting a Japanese kickboxer name. I can't mess this up. Tenshin Nasukawa. He is a professional, that was good, right? He is a professional Japanese kickboxer, and he's fighting Floyd. However, this Wednesday, Floyd has reported that he is not fighting. And I was gonna come in here and say that Floyd can't read and all that stuff, and that's funny. But here's what's actually funny about the situation. Floyd did this verbatim. He said this morning that he is not fighting because he couldn't understand all the rules of the contract. Yeah, it is what it is. All right, so the Rams, my <laughs> beloved Rams, lost this past Sunday. Their undefeated season has came to a close. But here's the thing. They lost to the Saints. And here's why I think they lost to the Saints. Have you ever been to New Orleans? Yes. Have you ever been to Bourbon Street? Yes. If I was undefeated from LA, killing it, doing great, I'd get pretty messed up too. So I don't believe that the Saints actually beat them. I think that that hungover actually got a part of their whole little thing. But sadly, we're no longer undefeated. Aww. Damn. 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 All right, so another one, my favorite person in the world, LeBron James, LeBron being LeBron. Let's make some noise for Bron Bron. We're doing terrible. We haven't won a pivotal game. We've won some games, but nothing truly pivotal. And here's what the talk is in Lakerland, that Luke Walton, the coach, is about to be fired. And I just want to bring up a list of all the coaches that LeBron has gotten fired in. It's five, actually. Five coaches. One man has gotten fired. Paul Silas, damn. damn, Mike, you don't have to drink each time because it's a lot. We don't want to get too drunk. Mike Brown, damn, David Blatt, damn, Brandon Malone, damn. And here's the most pivotal one that has gotten fired. Tyron Liu for the Cleveland Cavaliers. LeBron won a ring with Tyron Liu. Cleveland, it was happy times. 52 years, they didn't win. But Tyron Liu got fired this past month. Why did Tyron Liu get fired? It's simple. LeBron's not in Cleveland. LeBron's not in Cleveland. You don't win, people get fired, people lose jobs, people lose stability. Damn. 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 On a happy note, Simone Biles. Simone's being the shit again, always being the shit. So Simone has actually made a record like she always does, but this is the best part of the record. She's African American, obviously, right? She did a record that has never been done by an American, an African American. Matter of fact, a woman in general. 
She won a medal in every event at the World Championships this past 2018. And to that, I want to say keep killing it. Can't wait to see you in the next Olympics. And I'm Johnny with the sports. Damn, Damn yeah. Welcome back. We're here again with Will and, Will and Lena. <gasps> Woo, oh it's time for some more drinking games, some more news. Who we got? Hey, Lee Jones. Come over here. Talk about this. You're coming in like the she end of the show right late. now. She ain't coming like she was on top. Just how you showing up with a bottle right now. I had my boots crap. I was at a what? Bottle. I was at a wild feminist meeting with the, with the white ladies. <laughs> we drink wow. kombucha. Okay. Well, welcome, Tress. And you, what's your excuse this time? I also am a feminist and enjoy kombucha as well. <laughs> that seems. That seems like a good. Yeah, well, Excuse. Just, I don't no. know what you want me to say. Oh, oh, so because you're a man, now I can't be with my fellow women? That's sexist, and we don't have time for that no more. Time's up. Time's okay. up. Thank you. Time's up. Time's up, Time's up Will. God damn it. Okay, you know what? Let's just go to your segment. Let's just do the segment. Are you ready? I would love to do my segment, but I'm going to do it. Here's what is happening, though, in, in traffic news. Yesterday, there was this whole giant pileup. There was like this enormous crash all across the country of Democrats and Republicans, and I guess there's some independents wasting votes going head to head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because of that, there's all this like racist debris cluttering all the road. In Georgia, for instance, there was this really hot gubernatorial, you like that, gubernatorial <laughs> race with Stacey Abrams, my girl. That's my girl. Stacey Abrams and Brian Kemp, okay? So they were like neck and neck going along this whole campaign. But uh, Brian Kemp, you see him here with a ridiculously painful erection just thinking about all of the votes that he suppressed during this whole campaign. He did everything he could to suppress uh, votes in Georgia, specifically African American votes, Persian the voter registrations and doing all kinds of ridiculous shit because he could. There's apparently no law against running the election that you're running in. I don't know why, this is democracy, you're welcome. Anyway, so he's doing all of this nonsense. A couple days before the election, this robocall gets sent out to a bunch of voters in Georgia where these people do this really spot on impression of Oprah. You gotta go Google it. <laughs> They're neo-Nazis from Idaho, so they really locked that uh, impression down. It's Oprah telling everyone to vote for her girl, Stacy because she's a magical Negro, like herself. And I'm not mad at that. I'm also a magical Negro. <laughs> but he did warn that, that uh, white women could vote for her, her as well because white women listen to everything that Oprah says. And I feel like that's definitely racist. Against white women, we all do what Oprah says. <laughs> she's right and you're a fool if you don't listen to her. But after that, and it was like, it was all neo-Nazis. But Brian Kemp did come out and, and say that those are his supporters, yes, but he does not stand with them. But on the other hand, the, uh, the day before the election, Brian Kemp tweeted about Stacey Abrams being too extreme for Georgia because she had the New Black Panther Party supporting her. Now, I would rather have New Black Panthers than New Nazis supporting me, but that's just me. Maybe Stacey is too extreme dream for Georgia, you know? Maybe she's too extreme for you, Brian Kent. Maybe you can't handle it, all of this magical negress. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can't handle it. Oh, no. too extreme for you. Yes. And that's very subtle in comparison, right? Because also in Florida, there's tons of clutter going on right now because uh, you've got DeSantis and Andrew Gillum. Didn't turn out the way some of us had hoped. Gillum conceded and DeSantis won. And he had a little help because he knew what the voters wanted to hear. And he said it himself on Fox News, of course. He, uh, one, said that Andrew Gillum was very articulate. If you know any well-spoken black people, that's uh, something you don't wanna say, okay? Yes, I'm articulate because uh, I just learned how to speak. That's not a compliment. Uh, I'm sure there are tons of articulate people of all races, but you don't point it out, do you? Do you? So he said that Andrew Gillum was very articulate, and then he also told his voters that uh, we don't want to monkey up this election. Now, I know y'all heard that, y'all thought that might have been racist, but not to him. 
He said that had nothing to do with race. It's a common phrase that we all use day to day. Okay. Listen, we already said eight, not eat eight. <laughs> and then my old governor, Sonny Perdue, the old governor of Georgia, who's yeah. now all of our secretary of agriculture, also said to uh, his constituents that um, this election is too cotton picking important. <gasps> and for those of you not from the South, we don't say that shit no more. So that, uh, all that debris is in the road and, and eventually we're gonna have to clean some of that up. But you know what, don't just think that this is the South because this is also happening right here in California because we had this great house race between Amar Kepanajar and Duncan Hunter. Duncan Hunter's the white one, if you didn't get that. But uh, Duncan Hunter right now is under indictment but he still beat out Amar Kempinajar, and uh, part of that is because this beautiful man beautiful. is so beautiful. Fine. This man yeah. is half Mexican okay. and half Palestinian, yeah. and he does come from he comes from a questionable background. So anyway, um, Duncan Hunter ran this ad saying that Amar was a security risk. Ooh. You know the show Homeland. It was a very Homeland esque campaign ad. But he was just like, uh, that Amar Kemnajar is a security risk that we cannot afford. And I'm like, uh, security risk? Are we gonna talk about the way Donald Trump is walking around talking on his fucking iPhone like China, Russia, and every terrorist in the world is listening to him? Like when I watch porn on my iPhone, I still cover up the camera. Yes! What are you talking about? The risk is Donald Trump. The risk is not Amar Kemnajar. I mean, the only security Risk, or the only thing he's a security risk to is my uterus because he's about to be my new baby daddy. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> like he's unemployed, he's heartbroken, he's vulnerable. All that to say, yes, there, there have been a lot of crashes. There have been a lot of losers on the blue side, but we also have some winners. Regulators, mount up. There they go. Of the beautiful people who are now going to be representing us, and uh, they're going to be taking on our little Immortan Joe, President Immortan Joe over here. Even though he wants to like drag us into this Mad Max Fury Road type situation where we're all just fighting against each other, we're coming for you. That's right. All in all, yes, it was a, a dirty fight. There are a lot of things that we're going to have to work through as a country, but I believe in us. You know what I'm saying? We came out. We came out on Tuesday and we did what needed to be done. So, damn. Damn. Hey, great job. We give it up for Lee Jones. Do I have to? Can I get it? Yeah. <laughs> How are you guys doing tonight? Ah, God damn it. Chess. Hey, I heard you. You know I do drugs. Don't sneak up on me like that. I stole this off the shelf. This just makes your mouth blue. Why did you that. drink blue curacao? I didn't want that. It's not even alcoholic. It's just I syrup. Just, it was in a bottle and I wanted it. <laughs> That's yeah. just gin. Are you feeling it? Oh, yeah. It's cute. It's Cheers. The damn. Damn. Whew. Thank you very much. I have the weather for you. <laughs> because it's blue skies and all over the U.S. I will. Yeah. We did it. Woo. We took back the house. Woo. Damn. Woo. Won't women do it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, there's math involved. It's gonna be like 122 women who are gonna be all up on the hill, showing up, showing out, doing the damn thing. But 51 to 59 percent of them will be white women up on the hill, probably voting against their interests, just like they did in Texas, Florida, and Georgia. Oh, oh Texas, the worst state in the union. <laughs> they're the reason why Beto lost, Gillum lost, and Abrams probably lost. So I created a meme. So I put black women in 2016. Has, we're like, white women, really? Then we're like, oh, we're gonna be friends before the 2018 midterm. But then this happened. Black women were like, what the fuck? Oh, I see you. Oh, this is what we're gonna do? Then we're gonna be heading to DC in January. We're gonna blow some shit up in 2020. <laughs> this is what we have to do, okay? <sighs> white women just everywhere, all over the world, all over the country, just doing God knows whatever with their votes. I don't 
But you know what? There's gonna be clear skies. You know, white clouds can mean marine layer. Could just be a pollution haze. It's gonna open up, it's gonna be sunny, and all those women are gonna show up and show out, like I said, up in Congress. Yeah. That's right, they're gonna be bringing the thunder. They're gonna be bringing the lightning. They're gonna be handed to little drumpy boy. That's right, the holidays are coming. And I'm pretty sure they got a nice scurvy impeachment blanket to hand them from the caravan. That's what the caravan's bringing, little scurvy blankets. We're gonna hand it to, to that guy who's occupying the office. Yeah, it's kind of messed up. There was this beautiful unicorn of a rainbow, right, that collapsed on itself. And it's, it caused this beautiful black, lush cloud over New York in the form of Tish James. She was elected as attorney, attorney general, I can say that, attorney general of New York. She's the first, black, first woman. She's the first black person. She's the first black woman all rolled up in one. Yeah, she's going to be the attorney general. Look at her. She's so pretty. So that's what happened. You don't need an umbrella in New York because that black cloud is just a beautiful black cloud. Clear skies are going to arrive in D.C. in January. But before that, the shit storm that I talked about two weeks ago is still going to be there. But clear skies is coming in January in the form of Maxine Waters. That's right. <laughs> Auntie Maxine's going to be chair of the Financial Services Committee. And you know one thing a black woman can do is budget a house. Okay, she keep that thermom stat below 63, yes. all right? You not gonna get no brand name shit. And when we go to the store, don't ask for a damn thing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I wanna talk about that cold front that showed up in Texas and Florida and Georgia. Oh my God, it was a cold day in hell before they gonna let any black person run a state, any Democrat represent Texas. And when I say they, I mean white women. I'm back to that again. White women. Come on, man. We need y'all. We can't have y'all out there just wandering the plains, just doing whatever. Texas is dumb. That's no, what I wrote on. down. Texas is the dumbest state. It's dumber than Mississippi. At least Mississippi voted for a black man for the Senate. There's going to be a runoff. He's not going to make it. But Texas is stupid. And so is Florida and Georgia. Florida and Georgia is just stupid, too. That's the whole South. No, that's not Florida Georgia line. That's just the band. The, no, the map. Put the map up. But that's Florida and Georgia. I mean, they're just, like, why are they still here? You know, they're just like, like those Prius drivers in California. They're just assholes! Like, stop pulling out in front of me! Why are you going 40 in the fast lane? Why do you exist? Oh my God, no. Oh. Damn! Damn. <laughs> oh, but wait, I got good news. I wrote it down. Good news, happy Diwali! Yes! Oh, that right there. Happy Diwali. Diwali is a Hindu festival of lights and it symbolizes spiritual victory over light over darkness, good over evil, knowledge over ignorance. So happy Diwali to you and yours and to the Democrats! Woo! Woo! Yeah! Damn! Damn! Damn. 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 My bar back, my, my server, my hostess. Oh my God, welcome back, welcome back. Hey, you guys are doing great. Yeah, she's sitting down, good. <laughs> Oh, he said to me. All right. Um, so this is the end of the show. I uh, thank everybody for coming. Um, I, we it did add a new segment to the show. You're ruining my beer. Um, I like beer. Damn, comma, good news. Uh, there is this black girl. I just saw this literally before the show happened today. There is this black girl <laughs> who tricked all the Trump supporters. Oh, yeah. She like had like this red hat and convinced them that she was a Trump supporter and then got them to pay her tuition for college. Yes. <laughs> and it was like, sign catches. The, we're, the, okay, but the end of the story is this. She actually, she says that she did give the money back that was donated to her, nice. but, but, because she was worried about outlash or backlash, I mean, which to her defense, like this country's fucking crazy. I wouldn't risk it. Yeah. Um, but, but, there is like a picture that she supposedly bought a new iPhone with it, and I really hope she did. Because that's just the most boss thing I ever heard of. So, to whoever that black girl was on Twitter that did that damn thing, Black damn. girl! Yeah! Black girl! Hey, what's the music? Yeah, that was a very good action. Yeah, I mean it.
Whoa, Thank you all so much for coming. Give it up for yourself. You guys are great. I really appreciate you being here. You all look great. You guys are not ugly. I would have mentioned it. Um, shout out to my crew. You guys rock. Shout out to the cast. You guys all take like your vows. Happy Thanksgiving! Yeah. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Lee Colston. Uh, this is the news you can drink to. Damn! Oh, seriously, all you guys, get the fuck out. No, I'm very serious. No, you have to, you have to go. You have to go. Go to the lobby. Go to the lobby. Go to her defense. Hey, you, you know? Whoa. All right, we got some Howard Loves. Oh, we got them in the house. We got some Howard Loves in the house. Woo! Black. All right. Um. <laughs>